Hi, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to present. I will be discussing uh, our early experience with robotic uh, posterior application diastasis recti in patients with ventral hernias. The authors report no disclosures. Diastasis recti is a widening of the linea alba. Um, there is a certain interrectus distance that is considered normal, uh, typically around two centimeters, but depending on the classification system you look at, um, some argue that it's de somewhat dependent on age. Um, well, it's uh, you know, not a fascia defect, so it's not a hernia. Uh, many believe it to be mostly a cosmetic impairment with an abnormal abdominal wall contour. Um, however, there is some data that shows that it is associated with reduced core strength, as well as low back pain, sometimes abdominal pain, and pelvic floor dysfunction. Moreover, thinning of the linea alba may predispose to development of ventral hernias. One study showed that um, patients with small umbilical and epigastric hernias, 45% of them had concomitant diastasis, and it was not recognized. Also, there is further evidence to suggest that recurrence of the hernia um, could be higher if the diastasis is not addressed at the same time. The standard surgical approach for diastasis is typically um, an abdominoplasty, uh, often performed by plastic surgeons. Um, ha however, there are new methods, uh, especially minimally invasive ones, uh, describing uh, anterior or posterior applications. We report on our series of patients who underwent robotic posterior application in patients with ventral hernia within their diastasis. So 15 such patients um, were uh, found uh, in the period of 2015 to 2018. We collected demographics, BMI, width of diastasis, abdominal girth, as well as pre and post-operative pain. Our surgical technique was robotic for this group. Uh, after establishing pneumoperitoneum and placing left-sided trocars, we cleared the abdominal wall, um, reduced the hernia contents, and uh, started dissecting into that preperitoneal plane. The hernia repair was performed with running non-absorbable zero barb suture, and then the diastasis plication was performed after that, extending from the xiphoid to the suprapubic space. So the xiphoid would be here, and then extending all the way to the lower abdomen. Mesh was used if the hernia was incisional or a recurrent hernia. After the mesh was secured, uh, the peritoneal flap was closed. So this is our cohort. Um, we had uh, two-thirds were male patients, average of 57 years old and a BMI of 30, average BMI of 30. Uh, the width of the diastasis, and this was, I'll mention this was measured intraoperatively, uh, was 4.6 centimeters. Um, and then the list of concurrent hernias uh, repairs that were done is listed here. Um, one patient had multiple small midline hernias. Uh, the average size of the hernia defect is 2.9 centimeters in seven such cases uh, required mesh. We looked at pre and post operative pain. Um, pre op pain, as you can see, was relatively low, and so um, patients also recovered quite well from this. So not really a clinical significance here with a delta pain score. Um, however, we also looked at preoperative girth. So we measured that before and after the surgery. Uh, we did a paired analysis um, of the change in abdominal girth uh, from the surgery, and it was found to be statistically significant um, and minus four, with a decrease in 4.3 centimeters. The patients uh, did not suffer any post uh, perioperative complications, and our average follow-up pe time period was 15 months. Five patients during their follow-up time period uh, had a recurrence of their diastasis. Only one patient in, in that five had a recurrence of their hernia, and that was found at approximately three years out from their index operation. So in conclusion, robotic posterior application of diastasis as part of midline hernia repair is safe and well tolerated. There is no incidence of seromas in our um, group as a, you know, the nature of the posterior application. There was a significant decrease in, in abdominal girth. Uh, certainly, obviously, our small cases experience is insufficient to base, you know, hard recommendations off of, but we do feel that the protective, um, there is a protective nature of the diastasis repair for the hernia repair. Um, our technique is one of many. I think there's lots of fun acronyms for some of the newer MIS techniques for fixing diastasis as well as hernia. Um, 
and I think that further research needs to be done to see what is the optimal technique and uh, what is the ideal patient for that technique. Um, I know we can say that um, in our practice, we routinely um, check for diastasis preoperatively through a combination of a physical exam, uh, in-office ultrasound, as well as you know on the CT if the patient's had it. And um, if they do have a wider diastasis along with their midline hernia, we definitely discuss this option with them. Thank you very much.